With the pause on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine now over, at least 22 states say they'll now resume use of that vaccine immediately. Indianapolis Speedway has already resumed distribution of the one-shot vaccine. I still hate needles. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't bad. It really wasn't bad. Both the Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson vaccines offered at a church in Durham. We just want to be able to offer both. Um, some people will still want to have the J&J because it is so um, effective. The FDA and CDC saying that the benefits of the one-shot vaccine outweigh the risks. The agencies recommending J&J shot come with a warning label of the risk of rare blood clots. So far, 15 blood clot cases verified. But with 8 million shots given, that's about one case per 500,000 vaccines given. Medical experts say things like birth control and sickness cigarettes that some Americans use every day are exceedingly more likely to give you a blood clot than the rare and potentially deadly type from the shot. Meantime, over the past nine days, the average number of daily vaccines administered dropping nearly 16 percent. If we hit a plateau in getting the shots into people, we have this concern about a potential new wave. Seattle's mayor encouraging everyone to get vaccinated. We are all so tired of this, but we got to hang in there because we are so close. In Northern California, some counties now have a surplus of vaccines available. A lot of our vaccine providers have removed the requirement to have an appointment in advance. Appointments are also not necessary in New York City. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. And more than 225 million COVID-19 vaccine doses have been administered in the U.S. That's according to data from the CDC. The U.S. is averaging 2.8 million doses a day over the past week. More than 138 million people have now received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. More than 93 million have been fully vaccinated, and that data may even be delayed so the numbers could be higher. There are vaccine hesitant groups on both sides of the state line. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 17 percent of Kansans say they'll probably or definitely not get vaccinated. The top reasons are side effects, waiting to see if it's safe and not trusting vaccines. A similar number, 16.8 percent of Missourians say they're unlikely to get vaccinated. The top reasons are again side effects, not believing they need it and waiting to see if it's safe. Well, there is a push to get more veterans vaccinated in the metro. The Kansas City VA is partnering with the Veterans Community Project for a clinic on Monday. Volunteers will administer first doses of the Pfizer vaccine on Troost Avenue starting at 10 a.m. Walk-ins are welcome, but appointments are encouraged to avoid long wait times. Veterans can sign up online or call the VA to set up an appointment. KMBC 9 is working to help you get the vaccine no matter where you live. You can head to KMBC.com, click on that How to Get a Vaccine page where you'll learn how to sign up close to you. Tomorrow, Kansas City, Missouri will announce changes to its COVID restrictions. The indoor mask requirement is expected to stay. Since February, restaurants and bars have been able to operate during normal hours while requiring masks and allowing for six feet of social distancing between parties. Now, as long as those rules are followed, there's no limit on gathering size. Johnson County leaders could also make changes this week. They'll vote on whether to end the county's mask mandate. The current order expires on Friday. One goal of the order was to see if half of all eligible Johnson County residents could get a dose of the shot. Right now it's 40%. The county will meet on Thursday to discuss how to move forward. Missouri is extending a program to help more people pay for their energy bills. The program will now pay for bills through May 31st. Eligibility has also been expanded. To see if you qualify and to learn how to apply, you can visit the website on your screen. That is dss.mo.gov. All right, Katie, a beautiful start to our Sunday. Indeed it is, and so many people trying to get outside, take advantage of the fine weather. It's a beautiful morning. Now you will notice that the clouds increase for a while, but it's not going to uh, change the day much at all. It's still going to be beautiful, and then the skies are going to clear out this afternoon, and we'll be back to a, a beautiful blue sky. Our temperatures will be climbing through the 60s to 74 degrees by 5 o'clock with a mostly sunny sky, and you'll also notice the wind increasing from the south gusting to 35 miles an hour today. Tomorrow that wind will be gusting up to 40 miles an hour, but we push our temperature up to 85 on Monday afternoon, 84 on Tuesday afternoon. You'll notice the impacts. That's for rain that starts Tuesday night. 
Thunderstorms are in our forecast overnight Tuesday and a couple waves of thunderstorms on Wednesday coming to an end very early Thursday morning. The rain moves out and we'll have a partly cloudy sky in the afternoon and we'll be turning returning to the 60s by Thursday with the passage of that front. 71 on Friday next weekend, 76 Saturday, 80 on Sunday. All right, Katie, thank you. Sure. Well, the family of a man shot by a sheriff's deputy in North Carolina, Andrew Brown, is speaking out about his death. What's his name? Andrew Brown! What's his name? With all these killings going on, I never expected this to happen so close to home. And I got to live every day, my newborn, without even getting a chance to meet him at all. And that's going to hurt me every day. I just want justice. Well, Brown's family has not yet seen the video. North Carolina's governor publicly stated that he feels the footage should be public. The local sheriff, Tommy Wooten, said he's requesting the release of that body cam footage. He's expected to make that formal request tomorrow following the requirements of North Carolina law. And we are hearing from a childhood friend of George Floyd just days after former officer Derek Chauvin was convicted of murder. Jonathan Veal is preparing for the grand opening of his new grocery store when the jury reached a verdict on Tuesday. He says he stopped everything to watch. Veal and Floyd grew up together in Houston and Veal says every day since May 25th has been difficult, but the conviction brought a bit of relief. A level of happiness. Um, you know, because, you know, he was found guilty, but then, you know, really thinking that there's not a level of, of happiness I can really have because my friend's gone. Chauvin will be sentenced on June 16th on the most serious crime, second degree murder. That charge usually carries a 12 and a half year sentence, but prosecutors are seeking a sentence of up to 40 years in prison. Right now, a major portion of 435 is shut down. MoDOT is replacing the 67th Street Bridge over 435 on the city's east side. The bridge is closed until December. Crews started that work Friday night. Part of 435 on the east side is shut down from 350 Highway to 71 Highway. That highway should be open again tomorrow morning. And the city that never sleeps seeing a rise in a new coronavirus variant. Will the already approved vaccines be enough to slow the spread? Hear what local doctors want you to think about if you're still waiting to get vaccinated. First alert weather over 100 years of combined experience to keep you safe. KNBC 9 News leading the way.
It is 712, sun is up, skies are trying to remain sunny, but we will have some clouds float over for a few hours this morning and we will be returning to the sunshine this afternoon. Our temperatures are very mild this morning, depends on your cool tolerance, you might find it chilly. 48 in Lee Summit, it's 50 downtown, 48 in Olathe, 50 in Leavenworth. In our northern zones today, you're going to hit 70 in Maysville, 68 in Grant City, 76 in Hiawatha. There will be that time of cloudiness, but then sunshine for the rest of the day and clear skies tonight. A south wind will be gusting to 35 miles an hour for you later this afternoon. Same thing in Kansas City as far as the wind. Our high will hit 74 in KC, 70 degrees in Marshall, 76 in Lawrence, and then in our southern zone, also a south wind gusting to 35, 73 in Butler, Warsaw, 72 in Clinton, 75 degrees in Ottawa, 74 in Garnett. Our forecast for Monday, it gets warm. Highs will be in the middle 80s and very windy with gusts of 40 miles per hour. Kelly and I will be right back. Breaking news, Kansas City, Missouri police found a man shot this morning. They received a shots fired call for the intersection of 29th and Jackson Avenue. They found a man shot inside of a car just a block away at 29th and Kensington Avenue intersection. He was pronounced dead at the scene. No word on any suspects. You're asked to please contact the tips hotline if you know anything additional that can help with this case. Well, for weeks, New York City has experienced a rise in a homegrown COVID-19 variant. City officials warn that the variant may be more contagious and may dodge the immune response. But two new studies suggest the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are effective against it. Doctors at the University of Kansas Health System want to remind you to weigh the risks and the benefit when it comes to the coronavirus vaccine. Imagine if we said if there's any car accident that could result in a death, we're going to ban all cars. If there's any plane crashes anywhere, you will no longer be able to fly. Yeah. We don't do that because we want to be able to drive to work, fly to see mom. The coronavirus has now reached the world's highest mountain. A Norwegian climber became the first person to be tested for COVID-19 in Mount Everest Base Camp. He was flown by helicopter to a hospital and is now staying with a local family in Nepal. Any outbreak could prematurely end the climbing season just ahead of a very pleasant window of weather in May.
Four astronauts are the now on board the International the Space Station. The crew from the SpaceX Dragon capsule successfully docked on Saturday. The astronauts are from the U.S., France, and Japan. They're replacing four others who will return to Earth on Wednesday. The new crew will spend six months at the ISS. Saturday Night Live made a surprising announcement about an upcoming host. It'll be none other than businessman Elon Musk. SNL tweeted Musk would host alongside musical guest Miley Cyrus. He's one of the richest people in the world, famous, of course, for Tesla motor cars and SpaceX, but he's been avoiding the media lately. He's not really known for comedy, but he's lended his voice to The Simpsons, South Park, and he's had a cameo in Iron Man 2. Kansas City's Irish Fest coming back to Crown Center Labor Day weekend. Organizers had to get creative for last year's event because of the restrictions on gatherings. The three-day event will go back to its traditional street festival format this year. More than a dozen bands are set to perform, and there'll be plenty of food and drinks. Tickets go on sale May 6th. It all kicks off September 3rd. What a gorgeous weekend all around, Katie. You know, and it's timed perfectly. As you mentioned, it's the weekend, it's Sunday morning, and you either might be outside gardening, heading to a service, or participating in outdoor activities like the trolley run, and the weather is fine. We've got some mid to high clouds flo floating by right now. It's 50 degrees. We have relative humidity at 66%, so it's comfortable. The only thing that might make you uncomfortable is the tree pollen. It is still quite high in Kansas City. Our forecast does include a increase in cloud coverage for a short time this morning. You can see them spilling in right now, but when you looked at that city cam, you could see that those are thin clouds. It still feels mostly sunny and it's how it will be when this passes through and they won't stick around long. We'll be back to a clear blue sky here before too long. I was talking about the winds increasing later today. They'll be gusting up to about 35 to 36 seven miles an hour, but that's just the beginning. They might taper down a little bit overnight and then they're going to accelerate again tomorrow, even stronger than where they will have been today. Today's high 74, 72 in Belton, 74 in Leavenworth. Tomorrow's high middle 80s on Monday as the children head back to school. I want to tell you though, it'll be very windy with the gusts up to 40 miles an hour on Monday. And then Tuesday, we're going to be keeping an eye on storms coming out this, uh, from us from the west. They're focused over Wichita and Oklahoma City with the potential there for isolated tornadoes, wind and hail. And we'll have to see what the Storm Prediction Center says about Wednesday because some of the models are indicating this all stays to our south as far as the severe weather, some of it clips up into Kansas City. So we want you to be weather aware Tuesday night into Wednesday. This is what the model data is showing us. This is the European model and you can see it indicating the rain showers coming in late Tuesday night. I paused it here Wednesday morning at 930 so that you could see the intensity increasing from Harrisonville South. That would be wave one. And then the second wave looks to have even heavier rain with it. This comes in Wednesday evening. We're all told we might pick up one to two inches of rain from this on this path. The American model keeps it all much farther to the south. So there's still some uh, discrepancy in the model data best thing to do right now is just if you've got plans Tuesday night or during the day on Wednesday, have a plan B on standby in case you need to bring it indoors because of the rain. Definitely turning colder. All the models agree with that. We were warm in the 80s Monday and Tuesday, falling back into the 60s Wednesday and Thursday, back up to 71 on Friday, 76 Saturday. Next Sunday, also 80 degrees. And then Monday, our Royals are back in town and the thunderstorms are in the forecast. Looks to come in late Monday night, more focused on Tuesday. We'll be right back.
Well, this year's Oscar ceremony won't feature a red carpet. Attendance is limited to 170 people and there are strict COVID protocols. Jade Hernandez has more on what's already an historic night. The red carpet is ready for tonight's Academy Awards, but things will look very different this year. Gone will be the crowds and throngs of press. Only nominees, their guests and presenters will be attending. In three months, it's a billion. That's where we're headed. The Oscars COVID safety precautions taking cues from Contagion, a feature film two of the show's producers worked on. Three of the leading epidemiologists in the world that worked with us, they are all um, working with us to make sure that we can keep everyone who's participating safe. The Academy changed the rules for eligibility this year with many movie theaters closed during the pandemic. Studios opted to offer newly released films for at-home streaming. How do you put the genie back in the bottle when this whole thing is over? I think there is an appetite for Hollywood to find a solution where streamers and the theaters can coexist. Netflix leading all studios going into tonight's award show with 35 nominations, including 10 for Mank. What I want to know is what you think of it. The autobiographical film about screenwriter Herman Mankiewicz is up for Best Picture against a diverse mix of seven other films. Judas and the Black Messiah, Sound of Metal, Nomadland, Minari, The Father, Promising Young Woman, and The Trial of the Chicago Seven. I think a lot of these films share this social justice, you know, fiber that it feels contemporary, even though all of these films are period pieces. And for the first time, there are two women competing in the Best Director category. Chloe Zhao for Nomadland, who said this after her win at the BAFTA Awards. If uh, this means more people like me that get to live their dreams, as I am very grateful. And Emerald Fennell for Promising Young Woman also speaking out at the BAFTA Awards. I just, I just feel so proud of everyone who worked on this film. Thanks. Tonight's ceremony will take place in two locations at Union Station in Los Angeles and right here at the Dolby Theater in Hollywood. Another change, performances of this year's nominated songs will air during the Oscar pre-show. In Hollywood, Jade Hernandez, ABC News. And ahead of tonight's show, we are speaking with a local Oscar winner. In Hollywood, it's about one thing, money. <laughs> that is KU film professor Kevin Wilmot, who says streaming services like Netflix are forcing Hollywood to become more diverse. You can hear the rest of the conversation on our latest edition of KMBC 9 Storytellers. It's episode 77 with our very own Haley Harrison. You can listen wherever you get your podcasts. And remember, you can watch the Oscars right here on KNBC tonight. The show starts at 7, followed by KNBC 9 News at 10 o'clock. Well, a county near you operating with no capacity limits for the first time in over a year. Why they made the change and what restrictions are still in place. Also, what local doctors think about rolling them back.
committed to serving the residents of Kansas and Missouri. KMBC 9 News, leading the way. Hey, good morning. Welcome back to KMBC 9 News Weekend. Meteorologist Katie Horner is here with your first alert this morning. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, Kelly. Today it's going to be about the wind increasing this afternoon. Right now it's manageable. It's only blowing about 10 to 15 miles an hour here in the city. But look what's happening right now out to the west. That strong wind field is moving towards us and we will have gusty winds this afternoon around 35 to 37 miles an hour and even stronger winds tomorrow. As a result, Today we're starting the morning and moving through the 60s this morning, 74 degrees this afternoon. Tonight it stays rel relatively mild, 59 degrees, and then tomorrow 85 with winds gusting to 40 miles an hour, Kelly. Katie, thank you. Well, Kansas City, Kansas police are investigating a fatal hit and run. Someone hit and killed a pedestrian near 10th Street and Central Avenue on Friday. Police say the driver was in a white or silver SUV pulling a black trailer. They're asking you to call the tips hotline if you know anything additional that can track that person down. An escaped jail inmate from the Atchison County Jail is back in custody. Taggart Lee was arrested Saturday morning with the help of Kansas Highway Patrol. He escaped after sheriff's deputies say several security policies weren't followed Thursday morning at the Atchison County Jail. Lee was able to manipulate a lock breaking free. He's been held since January on an aggravated robbery charge. Well, states are beginning to give the Johnson & Johnson vaccine again after a pause by the FDA. Missouri is among them. As KMBC 9's Bianca Beltran reports, many local health departments have hundreds of doses waiting to be administered. With the green light to resume offering Johnson & Johnson vaccines, local health departments are planning to make them available in the coming weeks. Which arm would you like your shot in today? In Missouri, the Platte County Health Department has 700 doses of J&J &J vaccines waiting in the fridge. Jackson County has about 1,000 doses. They continued clinics using other vaccine types during the pause, including vaccination programs for homebound and homeless residents, which used the Johnson & Johnson vaccine before favored in those situations because it requires only one dose. Now, when the Johnson & Johnson vaccines resume, patients will receive information about the study. In the end, this vaccine was shown to be safe and effective for the vast majority of people. For some women under the age of 50, there might be an increased risk of this rare TTS condition. In Kansas, the Potawatomi Health Department held off on receiving more shipments of other vaccines in anticipation of this decision. We didn't want to take extra doses because we have those doses in our refrigerator already. The health director says as more vaccine becomes available, she's encouraging more people to sign up. Just picking the best one for your situation so that we can get to that herd immunity. Bianca Beltran, KMBC 9 News. And health experts say the rate of severe side effects is rare. Out of 8 million doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, there were 15 cases of a severe type of blood clot. More than a million Kansans have had at least one vaccine dose. That's more than 37% of the state's population. In Missouri, 2.1 million people have had at least one dose. That is 35% of the entire state. Jackson County, Missouri will host several vaccination clinics this week. There'll be three different sites in three different cities. Those are listed on your screen right now. The clinics are open to anyone 16 and older in Missouri. Appointments are encouraged. You can sign up on the county health department's website. KMBC 9 working to help you get the vaccine no matter where you live. You can head to KMBC.com. Just click on that how to get a vaccine page where you'll learn how to sign up close to you. Well, this is the first weekend with no capacity limits for businesses in Clay County since the pandemic started. Health officials say the change follows improvements in COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations and vaccinations. Now, masks won't be required outdoors, but will still be required indoors. Social distancing measures are no longer required, but are still recommended. Health officials also encourage anyone 16 and older to get vaccinated. This new health order will stay in place until May 28th in the Blue Valley School District. Virtual learning this fall, not a popular option for elementary and middle school students. Demand so far for online learning next school year is low. The state wants school districts to return to full time in person learning. A virtual option will only be available for certain classes at the high school level this fall. 
Olathe School Board members will meet for a third time after another parent is challenging the district's mask mandate. Board members have voted twice recently to keep it. The next meeting is Wednesday morning at 8. It is available to watch on the district's YouTube channel. Doctors at the University of Kansas Health System say it's too soon to fully repeal mask mandates because there's still community transmission. It's just very clear that the dynamics of viral transmission are much, 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 much worse inside than outside. And so if you're going to say to me, hey, we're not going to have a mask mandate outdoors, but we're going to have it indoors, I'd grimace because I'd say, mm, big crowds still should be masked outdoors, but I could get along with it. Doctors say they are treating 10 patients with active coronavirus infections at the health system. Five of them are in the ICU. Eight patients are still hospitalized with side effects from the virus, but do not have active infections. And today, a major fundraiser comes back to Kansas City. The 33rd CCVI Trolley Run winds through Waldo, Brookside, and the Plaza. Money raised helps the Children's Center for the Visually Impaired, one of only seven schools in the country serving children with sight issues from birth to school age. Organizers and families directly affected by these donations say they're really looking forward to this event. The community outreach that it brings is just so amazing. You see all the love, you see support. Um, it's, it's, it's just a good feeling. Safety steps will be in place because of the pandemic. Racers have assigned start times with assigned shuttles for allowing distancing. And this year, there's no after party. But man, oh man, Katie, these conditions, like you're saying, are perfect. They're, they're just great for being outside, running. It's in the 60s, or it will be in the 60s uh, in, a, in a little bit, so it's going to be pleasant outside. We've got thin clouds floating over right now. It's only 50 currently with an east-southeast wind at 14, but as we go through the forecast today, we'll be in the 60s by 11, and then we'll hit the mid-70s later this afternoon. These thin clouds will clear out, and we'll have a mostly sunny afternoon. But the wind, as I mentioned, it's 15 miles an hour right now. This will double this afternoon. It'll be gusting 30, 35 miles an hour and even windier on Monday with potential wind gusts as high as 40 miles per hour. But that pushes our high to 85 degrees, 84 Tuesday during the day. Tuesday night, get ready for some rain. This lasts overnight into Wednesday. It should be gone early Thursday morning. And right now, next weekend is looking dry and mild. Highs in the 70s, low 80s. Gorgeous. All right, Katie, thank you. Well, for thousands of patients battling ALS, a renewed sense of hope. We break down legislation set to be introduced that could be game changing for those battling the disease. First Alert Weather, over 100 years of combined experience to keep you safe. KMBC 9 News, leading the way.
It's one of the most puzzling diseases of our time. Many doctors tell patients they have three to five years to live after a diagnosis of ALS. But later this month, new legislation set to be introduced in Washington could facilitate more help for thousands of patients now battling the disease. Today, Today I, consider, I myself consider myself the luckiest, the luckiest man, man on the face of the earth. In 1939, Yankees first baseman Lou Gehrig gave a speech that gripped the nation, announcing an early retirement from the game after a deadly diagnosis with ALS. That I might have been given a bad break, but I've got an awful lot to live for. Awareness for the disease during a digital age looks more like this, the ice bucket challenge. But behind the laughs are painful stories and struggles with a disease that still has few answers. All right, guys, next muscle group we're going to hit is the triceps. For Scott Smith, physical fitness is a way of life. Breathe out. A passion leading to ownership of a personal training business in Kansas City. Part of how I got here was being a high achiever, a goal setter, and I think that's a good thing. After years of regimented schedules, a growing family, and growing success, it was a small change that triggered a major revelation. I was interviewing 